Hello, my name is Tristan Busher. I work in the Center for Bioinformatics. Uh, we handle most of the sequencing data that gets sequenced here at UNC. Um, we distribute it, and in various cases, we help people with analyzing their data or teaching them how to analyze their data. So anyways, uh, today I will tell you about sort of sequencing uh, technology we have at UNC and the basic idea of how they work at a little bit more than a basic level, but not too detailed into the chemistry. So HTSFF is the high throughput sequencing facility. It's one of the core facilities at UNC. And they are the people who take samples, uh, prep the samples, run the samples on the machines. When that is done. Uh, me and with the help of some of the people in the bioinformatics core, um, transfer the data off from there, uh, do the basic processing, release the data. And as I said earlier, in certain cases, um, all right. So there are three basic machines we have here at UNC. Um, most of the sequencing is done with the aluminum machines. Uh, you can think of this as the workhorse of sequencing. Uh, it produces a lot of data, um, over a million reads, uh, between 50 and 100 base pairs. So there are longer uh, reads possible. I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, generally, the aluminum sequencing takes the longest, um, but they have sort of newer machines, the MySeq, and a rapid run capability on the bigger machines that will do the sequencing faster but generally for a smaller set of runs. Um, then we have the PAC Bio machine. Uh, we've had this for about two years. Um, it's a lot different than some of the other technologies in that it sequences exactly one molecule at a time. Uh, I'll get more into why that is different. It is possible very, very long reads, uh, over 20K at the moment. One of its drawbacks is it has a lot less accuracy than some of these other sequencing technologies. And then also, I will briefly talk about the ion torrent system, which I don't actually deal with as much. It's a lot different than other sequencing in that it does not use uh, detection of the base pairs through fluorescence. And it is sort of like the MySeq, uh, this move towards benchtop sequencing where the machines not that big, and they're all sort of racing to get to this thing that you might have heard of in the news, which is thousand dollar genome that can sequence an individual person or at least all their variants for just a thousand dollars. So let's start with aluminum. Uh, they have two main machines that they sell people. Uh, the HiSeq, which is more sort of industrial level machine, and then the MySeq, which is their sort of entry into the benchtop uh, rapid sequencing. Um, as you can see by some of these stats here, uh, the high seek, um, we have 10 of these. I believe four of them are the 2500s. Uh, the main difference between the 2500 is that 2500 is capable of this rapid mode run. Um, you can have up to 200 base pair reads, or each length can be a paired 100 base pair read. Uh, total of about 600 uh, gigabases total, um, depending on whether you run it in this paired read or single read mode. Obviously, you get half as many in single read mode. Uh, the longest type of run, which is basically paired in 100 base pairs to get you that full 6 billion paired reads, will take you 11 days. Um, the rapid run runs a lot faster. It only actually sequences uh, one fourth as much in general. Um, though, due to certain aspects of the chemistry, it can sequence slightly longer. Uh, the MySeq. Uh, which is a smaller benchtop one, runs a lot faster, usually in about less than two days. Um, less reads overall, um, but you can also get slightly longer reads. In fact, they have a new kit, and I think you can get up to paired 300 base pair reads. Um, and I'll get into a little bit more detail about the single end and the paired end reads a little bit further on. So, what are the main advantages to using the Illumina system? Uh, it is basically the most mature of these three technologies that I've been talking about. Um, it's been around for very many years. Uh, they've been refining it a lot. Um, it is the best cost per base pair. If you're just 
looking generally to sequence a lot of sequence, probably want to go with Illumina. Um, because they're sort of the dominant uh, machine in the market, a lot of bioinformatics tools are written for it. A lot of people are using it. A lot of a lot is known about sort of the quirks and stuff of the system. Um, so in some sense, we're basically going with the you know thing that is most used and most well understood and has the most support for it. Um, so as I sort of indicated earlier, there there are several different ways to run the machine. You can either run it in single in mode or paired in mode. And you can dial in a lot of different read lengths. Um, the general runs are 50 and 100. And like I said in that earlier slide, uh, in the wrapper mode, you can go up to 150. And the MyT can do 250, even up to 300. Um, just to give you a, uh, I'll show you more visually about the single in versus paired in, but imagine you have your DNA fragment. The machine is capable of sequencing it from one end and then also from the other end. Um, for various technical reasons, you can't always get the full length. So you can imagine sometimes you just kind of want some indication of where this fragment is. So sequencing from one end is good. And then sometimes you want to sequence it from both ends. Now, like I said, Illumina's sequencing has been around for a while. So people have been using it for a lot, a lot of different uses. I mean, the basic thing the machine does is it sequences DNA. But there are a lot of different ways you can prepare your DNA. So people have developed a lot of different uh, sort of experiment types that they would use in terms of using the Illumina machine. Uh, I just listed a few of them here. Uh, one of the most common ones that was used when the, when the technology first came out is basically using chromatin immunoprecipitation to select your DNA fragments for sequencing. Uh, the basic idea is you have some proteins that you think bind someplace in the DNA. You have an antibody. The antibody binds those sections. Um, well, first you pre-fragment your DNA, and then you use uh, the selection of the antibody on those proteins to pull out just those fragments of DNA. And then you take your selected DNA, you can run it, and it basically tells you where in a genome those proteins were binding. Um, something that's used a lot for now is RNA-seq. Uh, again, like I said, the machine actually just sequences DNA, so you have some library of RNA that you prepared. Uh, you convert it to cDNA libraries, and then the machine is perfectly capable of then sequencing that. Um, this can be used for transcriptome discovery. So for organisms that haven't been fully sequenced yet, you can just go in, get their transcriptome, try to figure out what all genes they have in that organism that is actually being expressed. Um, another big use of it is differential expression studies. You basically have your organism or your cell culture, it's in one state. You try to measure what the current levels of expression of genes are. You perturb it in some way, and then you want to see how the expression of the genes have changed. Um, and that basically will show up in that if the gene is being expressed more, there should be more RNA. Therefore, fragments from those RNAs should be sequenced more often by the machine. Um, some of these others are a little bit more exotic, a uh, very special case uses FairSeq, uh, which is actually developed here at UNC, um, basically uses the fact that you can really, really use the formaldehyde to strongly link uh, the chromatin, uh, uh, the histones that bind the, uh, the chromatin sections of DNA tightly together. You can use that then to isolate the sections of DNA that are between the chromatin and pull those out and sequence those. Um, chip Exo, uh, this is more or less the same as ChipSeq, except there are some extra steps where you basically digest more of the read away before the sequencing so that you can sort of much more precisely know where that protein is bound. Because you imagine if you have a fragment of DNA, the protein bound to it, and your antibody picks it off, you really only know that it was bound to some part of that fragment of DNA you have. Whereas in exo and chip exo, you actually try to digest away the parts that have not been specifically bound to the protein. Um, then there is stuff like MEDIP, which is basically also like a uh, chip because it's an antibody targeted to methylation sites. So if you're, whichever parts of the DNA have been methylated, um, the antibody should be picking out those sections as well. 